Hi, Max. You've been actively involved in AI for some time now and thinking about this. And in your book, you also talk about how AI can change the future around climate and things like poverty and healthcare. How do you see AI and its role in changing our future? Intelligence has been the key to shaping our own destiny. And the things we were able to figure out with our intelligence, we were able to become more and more masters of our own destiny. We've more than doubled our life expectancy, apropos health, for example. But there's still a lot of problems that we're still stumped by. So to me, it's incredibly exciting, this possibility that we might be able to amplify our intelligence with artificial intelligence and solve all those other problems too. Customers are changing the world. We're trying to help them change the world using these new abilities. How do you see AI over the next five to 10 years address some of these things and bring this to a better place, making the world better? At the high level, the way I think about it is we're building AI scientists that will accelerate all the research on all of these things. We already saw just the other week AI, for example, invented a new antibiotic against antibiotic resistant strains. We've seen the alpha fold and triumph where anyone doing anything in medicine where they need to know something about shapes of proteins has a, a new superpower. All of this is that bottleneck by scientific research. And uh, I think that if, if we manage to keep AI safe and beneficial, as it gets ever more powerful, what that means is a lot of scientific breakthroughs that we previously thought were thousands of years away, we might get this decade. What do you think about the collaboration between academia and industry on this path towards advancing artificial intelligence? I think the industry can do a lot of stuff which we just don't have the resources for in academia. On the other hand, in academia, we can do a lot of things which just don't really make sense from a business perspective. For example, developing techniques to make the AI really safe and reliable because that's stuff that ultimately should be open sourced. So all the companies use it. So no one is gonna, no company will really make a profit off of that. And if it's something that's only gonna be useful some significant time and amount of time in the future also, it, it can be hard to justify for a company. Whereas if academia does it, it's great. It just benefits the whole industry. You're a physicist. Do you think we understand the physics of the human brain? Do we have the tools that allow us to see everything that's in there, or is there something in it, maybe quantum mechanical, maybe otherwise, that we can't really see? Oh, that's a great question. I'm actually both a physicist and also an AI researcher, since that's what I've spent my last seven years working on my MIT group. I think it's pretty clear that you do not need any quantum effects to build superhuman AI. There's nothing quantum at all about GPT-4, and there's no indication that our neurons in our head, critically use quantum effects either in, that is necessary for you to be so smart. There's this idea of substrate independence, which is, is very powerful, which in plain English just means that intelligence is all about information processing. It's not something mysterious intelligence that can only exist inside of human brains. It doesn't matter whether the information is processed by a carbon atom in a neuron in a brain or by a silicon atom in some sort of other device. It's the structure of the information processing that matters, nothing else. And that means that we've repeatedly been able to completely swap out the hardware. Now it's CPUs, now it's GPUs, now it's this kind of, of memory, and now it's a hard drive of magnetism, and now it's flash RAM. From the perspective of the programmer, you don't even care. Yes. Right? It's the, the, as long it's as the information away. processing is the same. So you can actually abstract away a lot of the physics. That's the beauty of it, right? which means that there is a real hope for understanding intelligence quite deeply, even without understanding exactly why we have so many different kinds of neurons in our head and so on, because that's just part of the substrate. We don't need to understand how it works in order to understand the higher level. Of yeah. It. Many hope that this ability to simulate intelligence will allow us to recreate the knowledge uh, creation path that humanity has been on for thousands and thousands of years and maybe fast forward it into the future and accelerate it going forward. How do you see that evolving? Is that really going to be possible? Uh, absolutely. Not only is it possible, but I think it is going to happen because we are a very curious species. We're always thinking, how do we cure cancer? How do we do this? So if we can get some help building up that knowledge, of course, we're, we're going to. 
the open question is what are we going to do with all the knowledge because knowledge itself or even technology itself is not morally good or morally evil of course you can it's all about what you do with it that's right and this is i think where it's so important that we humans use our agency because it is after all us building this that we figure out how we can not only keep control over which way it goes also think quite hard about what optimistic future you know, we're trying to steer towards given that we're on the cusp of having these in this amazing agency what's the future we're really excited about what's a shared global positive vision that we can all get behind it's the shared positive vision that's going to ultimately make people collaborate to get to that future i agree thank you max well, i really appreciate you coming here and talking to us and enjoyed the conversation very much thank you this is really fun